Hello everybody, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to be doing an unboxing for you. We're going to be looking at the Marineland Penguin 350. It's a great filter. We've had quite a number of them in the fish room over the years. I will put a link in the description if you are interested in buying the filter. Uh, before we get into the unboxing, I do want to give you a little background as to why we got this filter, so stay tuned. So this is the problem tank. As some of you may recall, we left on a vacation back in July. Our hang on the back filter finally broke on us. I had to run out real quick, grab a filter from the local store. Got an Aqua Clear 70, had all kinds of issues. So this is the tank that we're dealing with. We've got to get a hang on the back filter that will make the water look better than this and not have so many issues. All right, everybody, so we're gonna be unboxing the Marineland Penguin 350. This is the filter, a brand that we've had in our fish room for a very long time and have had extremely good luck in all the different sizes with some very heavily stocked tanks. And these things have lasted a long time for us, so we're excited to get another one, get that Pleco tank looking a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and box this thing. I'll tell you about it. I'll show you how to assemble it. So this is the 350. The Marineland Penguin filters come in all different types of sizes. This particular filter is good for, at least the box says, it's good for up to about 75 gallons or so. And so in the box, it's pretty much ready to go. There's nothing else in the box. And so here we have, this is a rather large filter. Uh, again, this is, the box says up to 75 gallons. When you're choosing a filter, it's important to understand you're looking for a couple things, hopefully in a hang on back filter. Thing number one is yes, you'd like a little bit of water flow, uh, some turnover. The second thing, you wanna make sure that you've got proper and sufficient biological filtration. And just about any hang on the back filter is gonna give you that. And then of course, if you're looking for mechanical filtration on a hang on the back, such as we are for our Pleco tank, uh, that is another important aspect. Now, this is a rather wide filter side to side. Uh, it's not quite as wide front to back as the Aqua Clears. I actually like that quite a bit. If you were to go back and watch the first video that we did on the Aqua Clear 70, you would note that one of the problems that we had is how wide it was. And when you've already got a tank set up with a, with a skinnier filter, like one of these Marineland Penguin filters, the Aqua Clears are quite a bit wider front to back. And there was only one tank that we could put it on, and that was that Pleco tank. Unfortunately, it wasn't doing a very good job. So we're gonna go back to these, and hopefully it's gonna do a much better job for us. Uh, so you got the rubber band here. Now this rubber band obviously needs to come off. And then what we've got here, we've got the, the lid. We have the parts for the intake. And then they supply two cartridges. Uh, these cartridges are going to have some filter floss, very thin filter floss. There's gonna be some activated carbon in these uh, filter cartridges as well, as well as a plastic piece. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about that in a moment. There is a little slip here, probably for directions. We've got a little piece of cardboard. So it tells you, hey, there's room for more cartridges. Uh, again, we're gonna get to that more in a moment. And I think that's about it. Now, uh, so the penguin filters, one of the interesting features is they have these bio wheels. And as the water comes through, the bio wheels are going to spin. Now, one of the complaints on these filters is that over time, the bio wheels will in fact stop spinning. I don't rely on these bio, wheel, bio wheels to do much. And so if they stop spinning for me, that's really not a big deal. Uh, I am more interested in what's in the filter, you know, as opposed to these bio wheels. So if they get lost, if they fall off, it's really not a big deal. Yes, is it great to have a little bit of extra surface area for the biological filtration, but I have found the vast majority of the biological filtration that you're gonna need can be had in the back of the Penguin 350 in this case. So the bio wheels go on, they just kind of slip in like so. And then we've got the filter cartridges. Now, I have a video, it's one of the earliest videos I ever did on how to save a lot of money on these filter cartridges, because this is gonna cost a lot of money if you continually buy these things. And just about any hang on the back filter, you can add different media. Uh, we go out and we buy our own filter floss and cut them up into the proper size. What I tend to do, and I'm gonna open this, there's probably gonna be a little bit of charcoal in this bag that's gonna go everywhere. Uh, first thing, 
I definitely would rinse these off because this activated carbon, often what will happen is you'll put this thing in the tank, you'll get the filter going, and then it's gonna blow a bunch of dust everywhere. So it would be a good idea. Take some cold water, rinse these things off. That will go a long way in making sure that your tank doesn't get cloudy right from the start. Uh, but these things, they, there's two uh, notches, and these things just slip right in like that. Very, very easy. And of course, they give you two and tell you, hey, you can buy two more. But like I said, I will put a card in the upper right-hand corner for that, uh, basically saving a whole lot of money on filter cartridges. Buy your own filter floss. What we've done is these black pieces, we'll cut the floss off of these when, they, when they've been used up, uh, dump the charcoal in the garbage, and then I use the plastic piece kind of like a base, and I will just push the new filter floss, kind of brace it on here. Uh, I usually try to get at least a few of these, uh, four of these would be nice. And then you never have to buy the filter cartridges again. Like I said, saves a lot of money because this is where the real money is and the cost of maintaining a hang on the back filter. So better to do it yourself. So this is you, the filter uh, floss is in, the cartridges are in. Again, I would rinse these first. The bio wheels are spinning. Eventually, like I said, they're gonna stop spinning. I don't personally care because these things are not a major contributing factor to biological filtration anyway. All right, so in the bag, I kind of opened it up here real quick. You're gonna have a set of directions. We don't need those, because we're watching the video. Okay, so the directions we don't need. Uh, we do need the pieces though. And so this is the little elbow piece here. That's gonna slide right in the center. Uh, what I like to do is there is a, an attachment here and this attachment, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Uh, this attachment actually has the ability to determine what, where the water's coming from. It can come from closer to the middle of the tank. Uh, I tend to leave this little gray thing closed just because I want the water coming from further down on the tank. And the way this works is you just slide the center piece in here. This is an extension and this extension will go right in here like this. So if you've got a deeper tank, uh, we can go ahead and put our intake over here like so. And so now you've got the ability to uh, take water in from uh, fairly far down in the tank. I don't think we're gonna need that on the 40 gallon. So if we don't need that, we don't need this center piece. And what we can do is go ahead and put the intake right here and leave that second piece off. And then what we do is we take this elbow and it will fit right in the back here and we just go ahead and we shove that down like this and that's what we've got. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to have to see if I want that extender on there for the 40 gallon breeder. I have a feeling it's going to go pretty far down in the tank. We might just do this, which would be fine as well. We'll put our bio wheel back in here because somehow that fell off. And so what we'll do is before I put this, or when we put this on the back of the tank, I'm gonna fill this with water because we don't want it to run dry. And when you fill this with water, uh, it will help the motor start. I've had really, really good luck with these. Uh, some of the filters that we've had, uh, sometimes they don't always start up right away. You unplug them or the power flickers and they, they kind of pause. These ones have been really, really good for us. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, and it really is that simple. We've got the filter pretty much assembled. We can put this piece back on. This front cover goes on just like this. And then we've got the top part here. And so this is a fully assembled filter. This is the fully assembled Penguin 350. It really doesn't matter what brand uh, Marine Land Penguin filter you buy. They pretty much all assemble the same. It's just a matter of whether you've got one cartridge uh, area or two, but that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm gonna fill it with water. We're gonna put it on the back of the tank and we're gonna see how it does. Okay, everybody, so this is the Marineland Penguin 350 up and running in the back of the 40 gallon breeder. Again, what I like about this filter is I personally feel it's much quieter out of the box than the Aqua Clears. It doesn't rattle as much. The lid fits a little bit tighter. Uh, so you can see here it is running. There is not a lot of noise. So that's nice. The other thing, like I mentioned before, it's a slimmer uh, model, so front to back. So if you've already got tanks set up, it's not gonna be as difficult to get one of these things in where if an aqua clear, if you're going from one of these to an aqua clear, you may have some issues with the wall space between the wall and the tank, but this is up and running and I think we're gonna be in good shape. Yeah. You can see now it's only been up and running for a couple minutes, it's stirring stuff up, it will suck all that stuff into the filter. And again, my hope is we get a very clear tank by tomorrow morning. I will update you as, uh, as things progress but I had a much, much smaller Marineland Penguin filter on this tank and it was keeping it crystal clear 
When that finally went out after nine years, uh, we added the Aqua Clear, and this was about as good as this tank would look. If you ever saw it looking better, it's because we probably did a large 75% water change on this tank before we would shoot a video, because who wants to look at this? But we will keep you updated. We'll see how this does. Uh, hopefully it will clear up this tank in pretty short order. Uh, we will have to see. All right, everybody, so that was the Marineland Penguin 350. I think it's gonna be a great filter. As I mentioned before, we've had a number of Marineland Penguin filters in our fish room over the years. Before we had the central air system up and running, we were running strictly hang on the backs, and the vast majority of the hang on the backs that we were running were these Penguin filters, and we've had pretty much zero issues. Uh, the one that broke was nine years old, getting a lot of heavy use. The ones that we currently have are keeping the 125, the 150, the 75 gallon and Buna tank all crystal clear. We had one on the Pleco tank that was doing a great job until after about nine or 10 years, it finally gave out. But these, these filters have been lasting a long time for us. We will put an affiliate link down in the description below if you're interested in them. I, I Again, they are our personal favorite filters. I know that there are other hang on the back filter internet darlings out there uh, besides this brand but this is the one that we go to this is the one that i rely upon and we've had really good luck with them so if you like this video share subscribe and we'll see you in the next one